Okay, so now we got to do our valve adjustment. Okay, we need a Phillips screwdriver. We can use a big Phillips screwdriver so you can see better. Phillips screwdrivers don't break when you bend them easily. You bend this, the tip will come off. This goes inside on top of your piston, it tells me where it's at. I think we did this one last, so this should be on top dead center right here right now. Yeah, I can tell because see there, these are one of these is tight, these are both loose, so I know this valve's open right now. Which means that's on the overlap stroke. Okay, we're gonna put this in a spark plug hole. Now when you do this, don't leave your street river like that. It'll bend it in half, and that's how you break stuff. You want to stand it up like this as much as you can. Use a, normally I'm using my little small one because it usually doesn't jam in the top of gas tanks too bad. So this one I normally use. I put the tall in there so you can see what's going on with the damn thing. It still works the same. So then you rotate this up and down until this is, doesn't move. It should be in the right spot right now, but we'll just double check just to make sure. So I'll stand up screwdriver, you can see it real easy. That's not really moving, it's starting to drop. Yep, oh, it definitely did drop that time. Come back up. Not moving, not moving, not moving, not moving, stop. It ain't moving, stop. That would be called top dead center. There's a timing mark over there if you want to look at it, but you can just tell it that way. Okay, now we can adjust these valves. See, they're both loose. They need to be adjusted. Down a long ways to. All right. Shove it all the way up that way. See it gets loose, and you can adjust the lower one down until it touches. Right there. Then you got to jam that right here. Run it down to the bottom. That one's already adjusted almost. Okay. Looks like there's a bunch of uh, seven sixteenths wrenches I need to grab. All right, three wrenches. One's cut down real thin. In this case, we don't need a real thin one, but I brought it just in case I did. Okay, first thing we want to do is put a little torque on the Jam nut. Stabilize things a little bit. Let me kind of play around with this to see what we want. This is solids, so it's not gonna. There's not no hydraulic going on here. If it's tight, it's tight. So. Put a little tension on the jam nut again. That goes quite a ways, actually. I'm going to loosen, tighten the wrench. So you adjust the wrenches so you just squeeze them. You make your adjustments so you can do it with one hand. See how they got tight? It's got a drag on it right now. Blow it up a little bit, you can see better. So right now there's a drag on this push rod. Now as I tighten this lock nut here, See if I go like this, it'll tighten. See how the wrench the the other push rod is moving as I did that? I might have blocked it on there. Now the push rod got loose, see. So that means it's a little bit too loose. Now if I go up over here, hold the top one, and put a little pressure on the lower one, it might move. Yep, it's moving. I moved it half a flat. That's flat's what the nut is. It's still loose. So we do it again. So you can do it with one hand. See? 
Okay, now it got real tight. So I'm going to come back and tighten the jam nut again. So that's just one hand again, see? Tighten it up. As I tighten it, it gets looser because it's moving it. Okay, right now it's got a light drag on it, which is perfect for a new a motor that's already broken in. This motor's not broken in yet, so it's going to move. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it some more. Called a not quite a free spin, but close to it. Not exactly any drag on it either. Okay, it'll get real tight real quick when this thing starts. So, so that's one position you can put it into. Okay, me, I want to uh, loosen this up a little bit. So, let's see, just loosen. Yeah, it did move. It's a brand new motor, it's going to make a lot of adjustments real quick on the valve train. So I want to make sure I have a little bit loose when I first start it. Okay, that one's done. Now we got the next one. Same thing, lift the push right all the way up. Make sure it's up inside the, the rock arm up on top. Move the adjuster down. It's down right now. And you got the jam nut, which is jammed in the top. Jammed the pie where it doesn't belong right now. So you hold it and undo the bottom one. There. Broke it free. Now it slides down. Goes all the way down onto your adjuster. It's hard to see where you're at, but I might see better this way. I don't know. It's hard for me to do this stuff, you can't see anything. So right now I'm going to tighten the jam nut down. Let's see what the push rod did. Just like this. So I'm going to hold the push rod. Tighten the lower piece this time. Can't even see in there. I'm in a bad angle, camera's at a bad angle, I'm trying to show stuff, you can't see it, so if you can't see it, you can't do it, right? Okay, let's try it here. Man, loosen up. Okay, so right now the push rod's tight. It's right here it's loose, then it gets tight, it's got a slight oblong to it. So I'm gonna loosen up just a little bit. If you hold the top one and just move the lower one, it'll make it looser, depending on which way you turn it. That should make it tighter. So go over here the other direction. Go like that. It'll get looser. It'll go looser. And I also want to tighten up the jam nut here more. So you just hold the wrench. So you just go always squeeze the wrench to make it do what you want. Okay. That's pretty loose now. This one here I want to unadjust it a little bit. I can make an adjustment here. Now I retorque it. That loosened it up a little bit. Ideally in a fresh motor I want to run about one flat of clearance. That's one flat. It's a sixth of a turn. Okay, both of these are pretty loose now, which is good for starting purposes. Normally you adjust them for light drag on a solid motor. Okay, so that's those ones, these ones are done. Now we gotta turn the motor over. Top dead center on this cylinder over here. And then we'll be where we need to be for adjusting the valve on the front cylinder. So that goes in a hole right there. And turn the crank on the bottom down here. Let's 
See how the piston's going down? Valves are opening. Gotta come back up here in a minute. Okay, I'm fighting the rear cylinder right now. Good. Now it's coming up now. Right there, it's just starting to drop. Okay, so now we can go ahead and adjust these valves over here. Same deal. And this is for every bike. I don't care what kind of Harley it is. This, I don't get anything. Any motor, you adjust it this way. It's a push rod motor. Okay, so you shove it all the way up into the rocker box. Same deal. Come down here. Undo the adjuster. Go down until it touches. It touched right there. Bring the lock nut down. Good. Hold it, hold it with that. Okay, so now I'm going to tighten the jam nut by tightening it up. See? Yeah, I always do stuff so you squeeze the wrench. That's pretty tight. That's pretty loose. Okay, now you can leave this tight. We want to tighten the push rod up a little bit, so that means we have to unscrew the adjuster to make it tighter. Makes the push rod longer. So we're not on the jam nut, we're on the push rod. And just rotate it a little bit. You know, it's under a lot of tension right now because I tightened the piss out of this. Okay, it wasn't that tight. Okay, see now it's loose. I mean, it wasn't that loose. Excuse me. Okay, now I want to reverse it. So there's reverse. Okay, so that's good right there. I want it to be a little bit looser because it's a new bike, new motor. We're going to give a little bit extra. Right there. Okay, now we can check the torque, make sure that it's jammed good tight. It still is pretty tight, so that's good. Okay, that's it done. Rotates nice. I don't care that it wobbles a little bit. See how it wobbles a little bit? Oh well, I'm not concerned about it. Yeah, maybe you see it now. Need to be a lot lower down, I think, to see all this stuff. Yeah, see, now you can see better. See how it wobbles a little bit? Oh well. Okay, now we're going to adjust the one behind it, which is going to be harder for you to see. So put the one over here. Let me see better. Okay, all the way up again. And adjust the push rod. Lock nut above it. Okay, that one doesn't want to come down. Break it free, then a nut can come down. There it goes. Let me tighten the jam nut. See, that's how the push rod turns when I do that. Okay, I'm not going to make it real tight because the push rod got loose. See how loose it is. So now I hold the base, and we tighten, we unscrew the top, which makes it tighter. Okay, we already got tight real quick. Back it off a little bit of time until it's loose. Okay, it's, it's got drag on it right now, but not too bad. Get it better on this side. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and tighten this base up, which will make it looser because it's turning the upper as I do this. So it looks like you still you do it with one hand, see? A little torque on there. See the pusher got looser because that's the way it was going, see? Okay. By doing all the other ones I got a pretty good idea how loose it is right now. I'll put a little more torque on. It's pretty torque. Let's double check to make sure it's tight. And we're good to go. Okay, so there's how you do it. Some of that might not be able to see very much, but oh well. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put this up in here a little bit. Okay, now we're going to turn the motor over. Make sure everything turns over freely without binding. And everything is even. So I'm going to use my little wrench on the other side over here. So we're just going to turn the thing over like this. We're fighting valve spring tension. We don't want to hear no pop noise and no binding. You don't 
see which one's moving. You can put these up on here like this. Indicators what's going up and down, see. See what this one does. Okay, it's going to be working pretty good. We're on the overlap over here. I'm going to put on top dead center over there because we got to work on the ignition possibly. At least I want to know what kind of where we're at. That should be about top dead center, pretty damn close to it. Okay, so that's how those work. Okay, next thing is you want to get these push rod covers installed up there. So I like a medium screwdriver blade. Not a thick one, and not the thick one, not this one, this one's too big, this one's just right. The clip fits right on here real nice, it slides up real nice. So basically, you get the inner to go up, make sure it goes up in the O-ring up in there. You can push it up in there, okay. You take your clip, shove it all the way up the top till it stops. Take your studio driver, put your thumb right on the back of it. You hold it centered. And this one's binding up. And these things are weak. These covers are really short, there's not much overlap in these covers. But they're bending so bad, and they bend so bad, it makes it hard to hard to put on. See, this hits on the back of the fin over here. Okay, once you pop it in there, go ahead and rotate both of them together as a unit. Yeah, those things will kind of center up if it needs to be. Yeah, these covers, these inner tubes are wished. They had the little short ones, and then they went to the longer ones. These are the short ones. That's why the push rod's moving so much. See. It's like almost no engagement. So next time he does this motor, he should put the longer inner tubes in there. Okay. Clip. So shove up, hold. Go down like that, push in, pull out. Rotate both together as a unit, and you're good. Pretty straightforward. So this one works really good. This one here it tends to cut the cover in half. It'll put a big groove right in there and cut into it. And this big fat one here is too wide. It takes it makes it too fat. It doesn't it ain't room. It doesn't work very good. You're binding all the time. So it doesn't work worth a squat. Okay, put that one all the way up in the top. We're hitting on the fin right now, so I do that. I gotta pull the cover on my thumb. I gotta put my finger behind the push rod because it's so weak, it's going into, into the head over there. There we go. I'm gonna do about three different things at once. I gotta hold the lower out. I gotta push this out so it'll go over the it's cut head catches on this one, so you gotta shove the cup out, and then you gotta get the clip in there. It's, it's just I'm doing a whole bunch of things. Every finger and stuff is being used when I'm doing that one. This outer one's a lot easier. So straight up, stick it up in there. Clip. Just like that. Pull out. And the upper ones don't even want to rotate. I'm able to turn the lower one though. Okay, so all that's done. Okay, the last thing I do is get these push rod, I mean these uh, oil lines connected here. You got a lot of movement in this thing, so you want to put it right in the middle of the movement. 
That way, I do, uh, there's a rubber grommet in there. The tube has to be in a grommet to seal. If you if the tube comes out the edge, it will leak. So you just got to kind of feel it out. So you torque that one a little bit, and you torque this one a little bit. Just go back and forth. I tend to put a lot of torque on these. Probably don't need to, but I just do it. Okay, that's flat. You want to make sure the tube is flat, not cocked one way or the other. And you got the other oil line over here. You can see how it's had a zigzag right now. It's supposed to go this direction. I see I got this has enough room to come out. See how far that's down in there? You want to be about this way on both sides. Not you don't want to have one coming out the bottom. All the way down. Okay, this one's all the way down right now, so I'm going to go up just a little bit to center it and lock it in. Put pressure on both sides because you put pressure on the grom and it'll start shoving a tube one way or the other. Plus it's trying to rotate the tube either, also. Okay. Yeah. Come out of the angle, you can actually bend this a little bit like that. Make it more straight. It's not, it's not very hard to bend these things to get them whatever lines up the best. Okay, I think we got everything done on the motor this time. Yeah, let's see. We got no spark plugs in it. Should have some spark plugs in here. I don't like open motors. I don't like rusty ass plugs either. These are rusty plugs. PR5 ES's. So, yeah, these are they're burning clean, but they're they're all rusty. I don't know if he wants those rusty ass plugs in his new motor or not. Me, I'd put a new set of spark plugs in it with some uh, anti-seas on them. So I think I'll just do that because I don't want these in my motor. I'm assuming he doesn't want them in his motor either. You never know. All right, I'm going to do it anyway. I don't give a squat. He can always yell at me if he doesn't like it. BPR 5ES 11s. His electronic ignition. That's where we're going to use that. Let's see, this box is open. Oh, these are all. Oh, this is a brand new box here. I'll use this one. Okay, so we need that. Need to pop over here to get the uh, magic checking tool. Silver dollar checker. Next stop is anti-seize. That's way up there on the top shelf up there. Oh, too damn late. I'm falling down. Okay, now we go back over here to the motor. Do everything we need to do it. Okay. So I get new spark plugs. Two of them. Drop that on the floor. That always helps. Okay. First thing we just check the gap. Okay, see the gap on that plug? It looks kind of like nothing. I didn't drop it either. Yeah, it looks like nothing to me, but it's actually got a lot of gap on it. Okay, that's 42 thou. That's a little bit too much for me anyway. I like 35.
I'm done a 38. You know, so I'm banging on top of the bench here. It's going to piss off a lot of damn spark plug guys when I do that. Okay, there's 36. I can live with 36. Look at all that damage I did. I, I, I think I bent the tip. I'm going to throw the plug away. I bent it. Damn. They tell me that earlier. There's a lot of dumbasses out there. I think they know everything. Better not watch my videos too much. Get in trouble. Okay, this one's at 41 or 2 also. Guess what I'm going to do with that? Oops. Oh, look at that. 36 right on the shot. Hit again. There you go. 35. 35. I got that one right. Perfect. Alright, see how you do that? See, you just do it like that. And nobody... We don't care if nobody likes it. Okay, now we take our anti seize You don't need 15 gallons of it here, so wipe up it. Get as much of this off as you can so you can control what the hell you're going to do with it. Do not put it on top of the tip. It will not run again. You want it on the threads only. You don't need a lot. If you think you have to wipe it off because you got a big glob of crap on there, you probably have a big glob of crap on it. You put too much, dumbass. You only need just a little bit on there. That's a plenty right there. That is more than sufficient. It's a brand new motor. That's why you can put that much on it. Then you just go over and screw it in the hole. You take this one and do the same thing to it. You notice how I'm staying off the top threads right there? Because I don't want the anti-seize eating near that electrode. Okay. Now that one goes in. And you got to wipe the anti-seize off your hand. Because that stuff will get on everything if you don't keep it in check. Okay, now I tighten them up a little bit. Have a spark plug socket. That means it has a rubber booty in there, so you don't break the tip off. Then I have a little bit of a spark plug wrench, nice little short one. So it goes like that. It works really good. You know, plenty of leverage. Yeah. You can also use a ratchet if you want. They all work. So these have a fly, plug, a little. Oh shit! It has a little collapsible washer on it, so. When you feel the washer collapsing, you're torquing it pretty good. I tend to totally flatten out that washer, but you're probably not supposed to do that, but oh well. Okay, now this one does not want to go into the head. Spark plugs fight me a little bit. So I'm going in and out a couple times. The threads have to get friendly with each other. Obviously the plug or the head or both don't like each other. So I'm just using my hand to do it, I'm not forcing it. After I force it down, it clears out. It fits after that. So. Okay, that one is all the way down now, I think. Collapse the plug washer a little bit. It's got torque on it. There you go, it's in there. Now, the last thing is we've got a rotor to put on over here. like one of these. Be careful about your fingers. Don't get it stuck in a rotor. Could cause a problem with your fingers. Now, if you care about your fingers you gotta be careful. So don't put your fingers like that. Hold it like this on the outside edge so it goes in. It'll have a lot of magnetism so it'll pull in like that. Keep your fingers away from it. Okay this thrust washer goes right here. Don't lose that. That shims out your uh, your um, motor sprocket. I don't know if he has a belt drive on this or not. So we want to make sure we don't lose this washer. So we have to remind him to not lose it. It looks like he's using exhaust studs for his uh, heads. That would be my guess. 
There's an old pull shot. See, I don't like seeing this right now because you know what that means? It means one of those fucking goddamn push rods doesn't have one on there. That's what that means. Well, that one's really sloppy. It's in there. Good. One down. You know I'm. At, you know I'm at to check every one of those. Uh, how soon we get sidetracked off our jobs, huh? One problem I had the damn shoe driver in the wrong direction. Tired. So you put this under the fin and leverage it down and pull the clip up. There's one in there. Two for two. Good. to go home. Damn, I think got some tension on it. It's in there. Don't leave extra oil in your damn drawer. Makes you do more work. It makes you do a lot of work when you're tired and sleepy. Because you don't know if you screwed up or not. But we found out that I didn't screw up. So that's a plus. At least not on that part. I'm sure I screwed up on something, but I'm not working correctly if I'm not screwing up something. Okay, that bolt's trying to fall out of there. So probably the best thing to do is take that out and not lose it. Yeah, I'll leave it in there. Okay, looks like he's got studs here for the exhaust. Going like that. So that's a double jam them to get on higher. So we keep extra nuts laying around. Sleeve retainer. I don't like them coming out. I'm going to show me thread they need hanging out. Theoretically, there shouldn't be hardly any needed. Probably about there. Yeah, it's getting tight right there. That's perfect. It's a little short. Put the 
pipe on there and a nut and a gasket. Lock washer. Oh, he had those stage eight crap he was putting in there, wasn't he? I don't know what that looked like. I don't remember. Uh, let's see, he had some fancy ass nuts on them things. Oh. Well, obviously those studs don't go there because these are bolts. These go in the pipe. So, okay. I don't know what those studs are for. See, I told you I'm going to screw up tonight. Well, I would run the stud and screw that stage 8 crap. That's my opinion. And I'd put a longer stud in there, too. Another quarter inch longer would be perfect. All right, so I don't know what these studs are for. Something important, I'm sure, but we don't know what. Can't think of anything on the bike that takes a little short stud like that. Probably something, somewhere. Okay, we've got an extra one of these bolts for something else. Okay, pull that stud out. We don't need these. All right, we'll throw them over in that pile. Okay, so I'm guessing I'm done with this motor. Everything on it, alternators on it, washers laying there so it can fall off. See, this thing's ready to throw in the damn bike right now. All I gotta do is carry it out of here. That ought to be fun. Yeah, there's your camera. Look what time it is. See the time over there? Right there. That's the time. It might be light at six now. I'm not sure. Okay, we'll be back in a minute or two. I got a motor to get out of here. So before I go home and hurt myself, I'm gonna get rid of this motor. So, alright, it's the light. Myself. Oh well, I'm not too tired. See, I made it back. My arm ain't too happy though. But, oh well, me and Scooby are going home. Sit for tonight. So, bye.